Well, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, whichever the case may be today. I want to welcome everyone to today's special webinar, Change Order Management. This is a uh, joint webinar with uh, FMI and Dexter and Cheney today. I am Andy Holtman with Dexter and Cheney, and in just a few moments, I'll turn things over to Joel Stinson of FMI. But as folks are still kind of trickling in here this morning, I just want to take a few minutes and go over a few housekeeping tips. If this is your first time using the uh, GoToMeeting slash GoToWebinar uh, panel there, uh, you'll notice the navigation bar usually on the right-hand side of your screen. This is how you interact with us during the webinar today. Uh, you might see there's a little orange arrow there. You can expand or hide that navigation bar to your liking. Uh, you also find a no number of different options available where you can adjust the settings, interact with us, and more. Uh, one of the things you might notice is that you are muted today. Uh, we do have a good number of people on the webinar this morning, and we want to make sure that everyone's able to hear the presentation. Uh, so there's no background noise, can hear anybody uh, typing on our keyboard, things of that nature. However, like I said before, you can use the navigation bar and the dialog boxes to interact with us by raising your hand, asking a question, making a comment at any point during the webinar today. Uh, speaking of the question and comment area, we do have that little section there. If you do have a comment or question during the presentation, type it into that box and we'll do our best to answer it during the webinar. Or if we're not able to, we'll follow up with, with folks individually after the webinar is complete. Just a little note in today's uh, presentation, uh, we will be asking folks pretty early on here to utilize the question box to submit a brief answer as part of today's webinar on change orders. Uh, so just keep that in mind here in about the first uh, few minutes of the webinar as we get started. Uh, we're also recording the webinar today, and we'll follow up with folks the next day or two and see if you have any additional questions, with like a, a copy of the slides, or a copy of the recording, or, uh, or more. Just a little bit about Dexter and Cheney for anybody that might not know. Uh, we are a construction software company specializing in business management and operation solutions. We began way back in 1981 with accounting software for the construction industry, so we've been around for more than 35 years now. Today, we're the leader in cloud-based construction ERP software, and our Spectrum construction software is a full suite accounting, business management, project management, equipment management, and service management solution, and you can access and, access and get work done wherever work takes you. Uh, but we also partner with a number of different industry associations and organizations like FMI to bring a host of educational resources to the industry. These include things like webinars like you're on today, white papers, videos, blogs, podcasts, and a whole lot more. You can find these by visiting our website at www.dexterchaney.com. So now with all that you know, housekeeping stuff out of the way, I'll turn things over to Joel Stinson. Uh, Joel is a consultant with FMI. He has an extensive background in revenue growth initiatives, and prior to joining FMI, he spent more than 12 years in the construction industry working for a variety of general contractors and uh, building product manufacturers. Today, Joel is going to share with us some of the best practices in handling change orders, uh, teaching us how to avoid the pitfalls that cause problems on a job site, while realizing the benefits of change orders uh, and what they can bring. So, Joel, with that, let me go ahead and turn things over to you, sir, and uh, and I'll step out of the way. All right. Thanks a lot, Andy. Um, I appreciate the introduction. Um, hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, like Andy said, we're going to discuss some issues that everyone has with change orders. Um, some of the some of the things that cause those issues and and what some of the best practices are that we can put in place to uh you know make the change order process a little better for everyone so um you know no work shall be done without a written signed and approved change order um, not sure about most about all of you, but uh you know I hear this hear this one all the time um almost all the firms that I work with have this policy in place uh the The real question here is. You know, does anyone actually enforce it? Does anyone actually follow it? Um, and I can tell you from experience, most people don't. Uh, it, it, the intentions are good, but when it comes down to it, um, normally what I hear is, you know, we just don't have the time to wait for approval. If we, if we waited to get a signed change order, the work would never get done. We'd be behind schedule, you know, so on and so forth. Well, you know, I understand that, and I, and I get where you're coming from, but you know, there are ways to ways to speed up the process and ways to make make everything better. Um, so, from your standpoint, where you're sitting, uh, you know, what are some of the issues that you have with change orders? Um, if you would, uh, I think as Andy referenced earlier, uh, go to the comment boxes and if you, if you don't mind, type in some of the issues that you guys have with them. Uh, and, and and in a second, we'll uh, 
bring some of those to, the, to our attention and, and discuss those. Uh, I can tell you, you know, a lot of the a lot of the folks I talk to, uh, you know, all the time I hear, you know, we had to write that change order off, or you know, maybe we got fifty cents on the dollar for it. Um, you know, everybody's got everybody's got issues with change orders. Um, some are certainly worse than others, but uh, for the most part, across the industry, it's uh, it's an issue. Um, you know, and the construction industry is stressful enough without change orders, and then you add those to the process. There's just uh, you know, it can, it can be a lot at times. So we're here today to try to make that a little better for you. Perfect. Joel, uh, we have some, Andy. Yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, we absolutely have some uh, some uh, comments coming in here. Uh, I'll just go over a few of these if you'd like me to. Uh, absolutely. One is one is getting paid for work requested on the site. Uh, proof of request and work. That's that's one issue. Uh, do you want me to just go through these as as we go, or? Uh, or do you yeah, yeah. Just uh, just go ahead and uh, just tell us what we've got. And I think the getting paid for work that's one that we'll. Uh, we're going to address um, in the in the coming slides. Okay. Uh, another one here is incomplete information or scope not defined. That's another issue here. Uh, mm -hmm. Delay in receiving delay in receiving written approval for change order usually given to us a after monthly billing is submitted. Uh, here's another one: ignorant, unfair owners and consultants. Uh, <laughs> verbal verbal approval of change order given then at the end of the job. Or Susie, let me rephrase that. Verbal approval of change order given then at the end of job owner refuses to honor that. Uh, and E not agreeing with the cost, so there is no ex so there is an extended negotiation or approval process period. That's what we have so far. Folks, if you have any more, go ahead and utilize that questions panel there and go ahead and enter in some of the issues that you have, uh, issues and challenges you have with change orders today. So that's about uh, six or seven. Uh, some uh, there have been submitted okay. so far. Yeah, and, and and all of these we're gonna we're gonna discuss. And if uh, you know when we get to the end of the presentation, if uh, you want to, if you have more questions in regard to any of these, we'll have we'll have a few minutes at the end to uh, answer sp specific questions. But uh, I'm pretty confident that we touch on all of these issues as we get through. All right. So. Um, so some of the causes of, of change order problems, um, you know, what we've got here, we've got the customer doesn't understand the change order process. You know, that's that, that's part of, part of this issue of getting getting paid for work and and getting approval. You know, they don't know what your process is. Uh, you've got inadequate financial resources. You know, you get cash flow issues, whether it's on the the contractor's behalf or whether it's the owner of the client's having cash flow issues. Uh, poor plans and specs. Um, these are uh, you know a lot of times. Some of the specs are open for interpretation, and that's that's not good for anybody. Uh, the, the solution here is, um, you know, you've really got to you've got to get those RFIs out. You've got to request clarification. You've got to be proactive about it, and you really need to get all that done in the first 20% of the project. So, you know, some of that some of that's on you to to get clarification before you get too far in. Um, you know, poorly presented change order requests by you know by the customer or the contractor. Uh, you know, when you go to deliver your proposal, people aren't agreeing on the cost, uh, things like that. You know, you've, you've probably got to do a better job of a presenting it. You know, how how are how are you handing it over? How are you how are you presenting the cost? And and two, are you really selling it? Um, so that's another thing to think about is how you're going to sell it. And then, not knowing the contract scope or change order provisions is some of that. That you know, if your folks on site don't know the scope, um, how are they going to know that something's a change order? And then unclear authority to approve change orders. Uh, you know, are you negotiating with the right person? You know, if you're negotiating with the owner directly, then obviously that that's the right person. But maybe you need to educate them on the front end about about what the process is and what you guys are going to need to do work moving forward. Um, as you can see here on the left hand side of the screen, uh, we've got uh, some ultimate consequences of. Uh, Poor change order management. We've got profit erosion. We've got you know loss of customers, customer attrition. We've got legal issues that can come up and, and running out of cash. Um, you know from from there, uh, you know change orders. You can see all these other things. We've got schedule delays. We've got you know bad document control, general conditions overruns. All these things. 
Well, in addition to the ultimate consequences, change orders can also drive all, either stem from or drive those things. Uh, you know, if, if there's a change order that's holding up a critical path item, you know, obviously you're, you're likely to have, you know, a time overrun, general conditions overrun, things such as that. Um, what do we do about that? Well, we, we create initiatives to, to improve our process. And a, and a good process, what that's going to do, that, that's going to help you be proactive. It's going, to, it's going to inform your customers. Uh, you're going to document things really, really well with a good process. Uh, you're going to have some project controls in place so you can manage your risk. Uh, you're going to enable your people. And you're going to, you're going to start measuring your performance. And that, that goes with any process, but the, you know, particularly with change orders, these are really important. And you know, if you can do all those things and do them well, you're going to have better customer satisfaction. Your, your profits are going to go up, you're going to have more customers, and you know, you're, you're not going to have as many claims. And I think the last thing anyone wants to do is go to a claim. Yeah, so what we've, what we've got right here is, uh, this, is this is kind of a, a schedule that shows the, the impact of change orders in, in terms of days. Um, and as you go through most of these items that you see here, you know, they're looking at, looking at roughly one to four days. Uh, you know, at the end of this, only about only about you know four to four four five or six days are actually done doing work. Um, the rest of this is, is things that you have to do to get the work done. Whether it's preparing the change order, it's getting it approved, it's designing the work, any of that stuff. And you know wh what I'd ask you is, does your client understand this impact on their schedule? You know, it's one of the things that we we'll, we'll talk about. You know, when you're informing the client on the front end when you're first meeting with them. You know, you should address, we should address change orders and, you know, how they might impact the job. But here's our process. Understand their expectations as well. But you can explain to them, you know, this sample change order here, this is going to be 24 days. Well, well, what if, what if this is a critical path item? Uh, you know, what, what's that going to do to the schedule holding it up? You know, this, you know, the client might be more inclined, uh, to, to get that change order approved if you can, uh, if you can show them what it's going to do if you don't. In terms of um, change order management, you know, it's a uh, it's a huge profit leak for most contractors. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but folks lose a lot of money on these. Um, yeah, you, know, you rarely get paid for your true cost. So that you know, the general conditions overrun, overhead, things such as that. Um, you know, it, it great change order management that starts in pre-job planning. That that happens before you ever actually do not only do any do the work of the change order, but do any work at all. You've already, you're already starting to plan for this. And then um, you've got to negotiate change order limits. You know, uh, establish dollar amounts on the front end for unresolved change orders. You know, if, if, if you get to a certain a certain dollar value of unapproved change orders or things like you get, you, unapproved change orders or change orders that haven't been paid, that were approved that haven't been paid, you know, what what are we going to do here? What happens? What are the, what are the rules? Um, You've absolutely got to know the contract. Your team's got to know the contract, and you've got to know the scope. And your team, I mean, without a doubt, has got to know got to know your scope of work. Um, and then, in terms of when do you have the most leverage to negotiate a fair resolution? Um, I, I can tell you when it's not. It's not after you've started doing the work or completed the work. Your, your most leverage is before you ever do it. Um, documentation. It's critical, um, and adding changes quicker than you're resolving them, that, that, that's going to be an issue. Um, it go, goes back to setting those limits. You know, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but we're never going to get caught up. And then quantifying the cumulative impact of, of change orders, uh, it, it's hard to do. You know, what's the, what's the total cost? What are my opportunity costs? What are all these things? It's tough, but it's certainly doable. And then... Uh, you know, last but not least here, we've got, got to track costs incurred on unapproved change orders. You've got to know what those are. You can't wait till the end of the job and try to figure that out and then bill it and, and cross your fingers and hope that you're going to get paid. That's, uh, this is a example we've got here. And this, this happens while the, while the numbers from job to job may be different. This example happens quite a bit. I mean, I've, I've heard this to several of my customers and talked to them about it. You know, you've got a, 
you've got a project, you know, here are our examples, customer focused construction. You know, there are, at the end of the day, end of the year, there are three percent contractor, and that's pretty typical across the industry. Um, you know, in a recent job, I had a forty five thousand dollar change order, you know, forty forty three thousand uh was roughly in cost and the remaining was in was in profit. Well, you know, we decided to just let that one go. You know what? We're we're not gonna we're not gonna force the issue. We're not gonna chase it. This owner is a repeat customer. He's been a good client. We're gonna cut him some slack. Well, if you're a three percent contractor and and you let go the you know write off forty three thousand six fifty, the end of the day, um, you've got to you've got to sell, build and collect a million and a half bucks worth of work. I mean that's uh. That, that's a lot. That's a lot. You know, a lot of a lot of contractors out there. You know, that's you know, that's a couple of percent to their added to their revenue to do that. You know, one thing that we're not considering just in selling this million and a half. What's what's the time value of our money? And you know, that's the hard thing to recoup to begin with. But there's certainly a value that you need to think about there. You know, and you know, what is what are these change orders doing to our overhead? Um, you know, do we have to go rush hire a bunch of people? Uh, you know, does it did it overload our project management staff, and we had to bring in extra people to supplement the job, and now we're still not getting paid for it? Um, you know, so that's some of those opportunity costs, um, the foregone profit as well. And then, you know, how's it going to impact our cash flow or or bonding? Okay, so I've got a handful of steps here to. Uh, what we call successful change order management. So the number one thing here is to have a process. You know, the XYZ way. We'll take any of your company names, take out XYZ and put them in there. So whatever it is, it's got to be your way. It's got to be your process. And it really needs to be tailored tailored to what you do and, and what's going to work for you guys. And, you know, uh, you know what, what your tools are. Do you have the right tools? Are you able to, you know, integrate um you know, the change orders in with your accounting software. Uh, you know, when we talk about tools, other other forms we've got, you know, what are our mechanisms to track? Do we have, is there some sort of a dashboard that we're using? Is there, um, you know, are, are we looking, are we looking at our outstanding liability of how many, how many change orders have been approved versus how many um, haven't been approved? Uh, and then there's, and then there's always, you know, the right change order forms and formats and templates. So, um, one thing that uh, a lot of folks that I want to clear up is when it comes to forms, you know, a lot of, a lot of my clients will, will call me and say, hey, you know, I've got this issue with, with change orders or, or with whatever, and they say, hey, can you give me a form? So my answer is always yes, I can, because, you know, we, we, we've, got, we've got forms for, for just about everything we, we've helped people develop over the years, but it's, it's not always in the form. It's in this process, and the, and the form is just one component of it. So I, I know a lot of people think we've got a change order form. We're going to get somebody to sign it. It's, it's all well and good, but it, it really needs to be a whole process. Um, and then, you know, your change order process, it's got to be, a, it's got to be aligned with the firm's strategy. You know, but by that I mean, uh, you know, some firms are, are low bidders. You know, you're going to come in, you're going to come in barely above cost to win the work. And then you're going to try to change order your way to profitability. And if you aren't one of those firms, I'm sure you've probably had to compete with one or one or two of those. And then there's then there's the the firms that are you know have a little bit more margin in the job when they bid it, and they're more you know customer focused. Um, and then you know that that creates a little bit of a conflict when you've got to aggressively go after a change order. Uh, also got to make sure we account for all the cost, uh, general conditions, you know, overhead, all all of those things. So, you know, any uh, su supplies, project time, all that. And uh, last but not least, you got to be proactive. You, you can't just sit sit around and hope you're going to get paid for it. You can't even wait until it gets closed. You've you really got to try to identify these change orders on the front end and see if you can figure out what they are before the client tells you you've got to do it. So in terms of the process, you know, as we uh, look at the middle of the screen here, you see three, you know, there's three red boxes. You know, there's there's a change or an unforeseen condition that's identified. Well, that, that triggers to say, hey, this is a change order. Well, we put it together and we submit the change order. And then in, a, in an ideal world, that change order comes back as approved 
and we, we move on and we, we do our work. Well, it's um it's not always always that simple. It very rarely ever is. What happens is we've got a lot of white space in there. And um, you know, as you you know, you, you finish up this webinar today and you go back and think about how you're gonna manage manage change orders in your own firm in all your firms, um, think about what happens throughout this process for you that, that causes the controversy. Where is the you know where are the pain points for the client? You know, I, you know, of course it's going to be it's going to be priced. They're they're never going to like have to pay extra money for anything. You know, but also think about who who in the process is responsible. Yeah, you know, who's responsible on your end? Who are you talking to on the client's end? Um, and then when these things aren't happening, you know, what what level of escalation is created when when something's not done? And how long are we going to let it sit before it goes, gets escalated to whatever whatever phase two is? You know, we're going to look at also look at what you're doing now and try to see if there's um a way to way to streamline what you what you've got going already. And is there are there steps in there that are redundant or they, they don't make make sense? Um you know, some questions to to ask yourself is, you know, does everybody in your company use the same form? Are they handling change orders the same way, you know, from project manager to project manager? Um are what are they doing? You know, who defines the level of risk you take? You know, how how big of a change order can a project manager sign off on before it goes to the next level? Uh, you know, how how proactive is your process? Is there, you know, is there a project manager, a project engineer, someone like that that's actually looking into uh looking at the submittals and, and look at looking at the scope of work and trying to trying to see what um what's not clear, what do we need to RFI? What what's gonna be be a change order down the road? And then, you know, speaking of the process, what is it? You know, ask yourself, can you, one, can you define your change order process? And then, you know, ask some other, some other people on your team and see if they can define it. Does everyone, so does everyone know what the process is and is it consistent across the board? So, um, you know, dealing with, uh, Dealing with controversy. So we've got a couple of different change order proposals here. Um, people are going to look at look at these, and there's obvious difference between the two. And think about it from a uh, think about it from the client's perspective. You know, change order one. You know, we've got a mechanical issue. We had something that didn't meet code. The, the specs weren't clear, or whatever. We got a we got to change some units out. It's going to cost you you know sixteen five. Well, the the client likely going to push back in this case and have a have a whole bunch of questions for you and probably tell you numbers too much you know I'm only willing to pay you about half of that and you know conflict right out the gate as opposed to uh you know the proposal on the right change order proposal number two uh this one clearly defines what the issue is you know we've got to provide two additional HVAC units to meet the meet the city mechanical code um, all the supporting documents there, you know, the letter, letters are provided by the engineer record, you know, the roof plans are provided, all, all these things are laid out, and all the documentation they need is already there. And then, uh, to kind of soften the, the price a little bit, or soften the, the impact of, of, of just one price, is we give them a couple options. You know, here's, you know, the top, here's your best option. Here's, here's the best we can give you. It's a great unit. Um, it's going to have a 10 year warranty. This is, this, this is good. You're never, you know, this this is going to be great. Um, but the, you know, the other option we could go down. We could also do it for 11 grand. This is, this one isn't bad. Um, and none of these options are really bad. It just depends on how, you know, how long you, you know, you're planning on being here and all of that. So you, you kind of give them give them some examples. Give them some choices if you can. I know that's not always possible, but when it, but when you can, give give them a few options and and, and get them in, involved in the process. Um, and as you as you can see, you know we got our three three tenets of a good proposal here. Is um, you, know, you got your situation at the top that's explained explain with the supporting documents. You got price options, and then note at the bottom, you know we got the impact on general conditions. So what what's going to happen? Now you're letting them know that this is a critical path item. This is going to run three weeks longer than we said it would. Um, and so, you know, let's, let's keep in mind here, don't try to hit us with any LDs or anything like that because we're letting you know this is a change order. It came from you, but 
this is a three week process and there's nothing we can do about it, but that's documented. And it's not going to come at the end of the job where you're trying to got a client screaming because you aren't done on time and now you've got to you got to explain to them why they're late. You've done it ahead of time. You've been proactive. Uh, yeah, the other thing, uh, when you deliver this, these proposals, you got to sell them. Um, what you, you know, what we tried to show on that on that last page is some of that supporting documents and, and some stuff that you can just deliver. You know, when you're when you're with the client, is you got to show them the benefits of the change order. Um, you know, these change. Ideally, these changes are going to improve the project. Well, in this case, they're going to, you know, the project can't can't go on without doing this. So you you you've done something for them. You've discovered an issue that would have held them up. And now you've gotten ahead of the game and you're going to, going to keep this project moving. Um, it gives you the, gives you a chance to value engineer a few things. So that's, you know, what some of your pricing options are. We can do X instead of Y and we can save you some cash um, in the long run. You know, doing this as a change order is easier than, than doing a whole other stuff to contract. And, um, Again, keeping the project moving. At the end of the day, change orders can save money and time for both parties if they're executed properly. So ultimately, what we want to do here is really just improve the project outcome. And that's that's what you need to be selling. Um, frequently overlooked change order costs. Uh, well, we, we've got quite a few here, you know, from project insurance to material handling. Um, transportation expenses, warranty reserves, uh, per diem engineering estimating. Uh, th there's there's quite a few on here. I think the two that, that I see the most and that most people um, really don't capture is lost productivity, which is on the, the right-hand side of the screen at the bottom, and project management time. Um, both of those are huge. Uh, both of those can cause cause issues, um, you know, your project managers aren't doing the stuff they're supposed to be doing because they're dealing with a bunch of change orders. Uh, crews are slowed down. They can't move forward. Uh, this happens a lot, and, you know, while direct costs are often included in a change order, a lot of times not only the cost, but the consequences aren't, aren't uh, discovered with these two or with any of these, really. Uh, your process also um, also needs to align with your firm strategy. You know, so misalignment breeds frustration. You know, there could be a could be a lot of mixed messages. You know, if people are doing things different ways. You know, you've got one superintendent that, that uses one form, somebody else that's or project manager is using a different form. Uh, people aren't communicating. Things are getting missed and things are getting lost. This lack of lack of consistency. Um, it's, it's, it's frustrating for you, it's frustrating for the client, it's frustrating for your staff. Um, you know, especially if the guys are hearing one thing and being asked to do another. An example of that is, you know, this, you know, an aggressive change order policy about going after uh, everything, change, change order and all, but that, on the, the flip side of that, you're telling everyone, you know, we're customer centric, the client always comes first, we've got to make those, make the client happy. Well, nothing really, um, ticks a client off more than a, than a change order usually, unfortunately, at least when they hear it if it's not delivered properly. So you've got someone uh, out in the field that you know, some folks are, some folks don't mind conflict and they, they kind of look forward to doing change orders and things like that, but you also have the, the people that, that work for you that are likely uh, conflict diverse and don't really want to be the bearer of bad news and don't want to have to go and ask for money. So you've got you to think about all those things um, and, and Letting them know it's okay and, and, and getting behind your folks and supporting them with their decisions. Um, and then you've got, uh, you know, loose cash collection process with risk prone customers. Well, what, what we're talking about here is, um, you know, we aren't, we aren't monitoring how much they're paying. We're not keeping a cap on it. And if we know that they've had a history of paying really late or not paying at all, maybe we need to put a cap on that and have, have that in the contract up front. Uh, you know, Detailed projects and, and customers that don't have any controls in place. I um, mean, you know, that things can get out of hand quickly. And then, you know, you, we've got all, got, got systems. We've got a process. You possibly got a, you know, got change orders worked into your software system. 
um, we, we've, we've got all this stuff, but you haven't provided anybody any education. There hasn't been any training provided yet. You know, you can't expect folks to do things the right way if they haven't been trained and hasn't been reinforced on a regular basis. So what we what we had to do, uh, you know, as as managers is we had to put some guardrails in place. You know, we have to put some put some guidelines in place for scheduled development. What are the key activities? Make sure everybody understands critical path. If any of these uh, any of these items or change orders that come up on a critical path item, we gotta we gotta address it right away. We have some guidelines for that. Um, Customer management. How are you know what are what are we doing in pre-construction to, to set expectations? You know what's our performance criteria? You know is, is the client well aware of, of what we expect and are we aware of, of what they expect? Uh, change order management. Uh, you know allowable dollar exposure and allowable total number of change orders. Like how many are we gonna we gonna have out there? And before we before we do something about it, and then document control. Um, are, are your submittals still outstanding? Well, getting getting submittals done on time is uh it's important for lots of reasons. Change order is just one of them, but uh, there's a ton of reasons to get your submittals done early. But the sooner your submittals are done, the better. The sooner you'll be in the driver's seat. And then um, you know setting setting timelines and goals with all, all of your uh, all of your change orders. So a proactive focus. You know, if we if we wait until the end of a project to solve all our problems, the pot of money is gone and you end up in it. Um, and that's somewhere that I don't think any of us want to be. So this proactive focus, as you can see from the uh, from the chart on the screen, um, we've got an opportunity for cost savings. And you know, most of that opportunity is in pre-construction. It's before you actually it's before you mobilize. Um, once you get into construction, and then once you're actually finished doing any work, you know you're, you, there's really no opportunity left to save any money. Uh, so what what this means is that you need to go go through all the documents, clarify anything you can, and get a, get ahead of the game. You got a plan. So part of this proactive focus, I think we've talked about this before. You know, we've got to try to uh, try to identify. All of the change orders that we have in the first 20% of the project, um, and, and how do we do that? Well, one, we start, we get all all the submittals in, we go through, we look for look for you know cloudy scopes, ambiguous scopes, things that don't make sense. We get all these RFIs done. We, we get all we get all that in place, um, and, and we and we look for things. That's how we identify these change orders. You know, I can tell you another way. It's not not just change orders, but you know. I've had clients that have had submittals. They can't, you know, they're behind. There's a ton of submittals to do, and they don't, they don't have the staff on site to get them all done. Whether they're behind on submittals or the engineer of record is, is being slow getting them back to them, or what, whatever that may be. But they're out. They're installing work, and these submittals haven't been done. Now they've done similar things tons and tons of times, and they think they know what they're doing. But to keep the job moving, they're putting work in place without having submittals done. Well, then something comes back and there's a change. There's something that didn't work with the drawings. It should have been a change order, but now it's not because they put it in place without getting the submittal back to begin with. So they don't have a leg to stand on. So now they've got to rip out. Not only is it not a change order, they've got to rip out work they've done and then redo it. And it's um, it, it, it's it's a nightmare. So I just can't stress the importance of getting your submittals done as fast as possible. Um, I can't stress that enough. I mean, then we've got then we've got exit strategy. You know, so what what, uh, what we call exit strategy is you know when the job's about eighty percent complete, we get the team together, get the, the project manager and superintendents, maybe project executives, whatever whatever your roles are on your team. We get all get all the folks together on the project, and we talk about what's outstanding and what what we need to do to get off the job. Um, you know, everybody talks about having a kickoff meetings, pre-construction meetings. Well, it's just something that we, you know we call this a kick finish meeting. So we, we identify it, we assign responsibilities, and, and we figure out what we've got to do to get off the job. And, and quite often, this is um, there, there are change orders in here, resolve, either resolving change orders, getting paid for change orders, or completing. You know, there's 
you know, there's all your documentation that you've got to have at the end of a project, uh, you know, your O&Ms, all, all that stuff. And then, you know, we need to have a, a, a customized customer management plan. So you don't just have one plan for, every, you know, blanket plan for all the customers. You might have some blanket guidelines, and, and you set up what we, what we talked about in the last slide to set up the guardrails. But for each, each client, you've got to, got to learn what their process is, how, how, how they work, how they, what the payment terms are and all this stuff, and, and maybe even, even get to know them, know the person, how they kind of develop a plan on how you're going to manage these things when they come up. Because we all know they're, they're going to come up, and if you if you don't come up with a plan on the front end, you're, you're going to have issues down the road. So what we want here is we want quick decisions and quick resolutions. We want we want folks to give us solutions to to things outstanding and not just call you up and give you give you problems. And if you enable your people, you put all the right processes in place to handle these four things your team will be able to give you solutions instead of problems. Um, so, so metrics. Um, you know, we, we aren't going to know how we're doing on change orders unless we measure them. You know, so it's that metric or that, that which is measured is taken seriously. So, you know, if we're not measuring it, we're not monitoring it, we just, we just don't know how we're doing and things are likely getting away from us. So these, these metrics don't always have to be complicated. I mean, you can make them as complicated as you want, but I mean, I've got a couple examples up here that are that are really simple but but effective. Um, you know, on the top reading is that you know it's a simple dashboard, but it's uh, you know the project liability measure. So we've got approved change orders and unapproved change orders. So here's how many we've got approved and what we're you know what we're doing, and here's and here's work that we've actually started to put in place that that's unapproved change order, and that's you know. Is is that amount of liability acceptable to you? And what are your, you know, what are your standards for your company? And now you also need to look at how fast are they paying them. So it's fine. Maybe you've got maybe all your change orders are approved, but you're not actually collecting any of them. Well, you got to measure that too, and you got to pay attention to what's not what's been approved and what's not been paid and why it's not been paid, and find out if it's an issue A on your end or, or B with the customer. And at what point? You know, where do you put the threshold on, you know, and like, this, for example, we've got $7,000 here. Is that acceptable? You know, make it 70000 But where, when do we pull the emergency break and say, hey, look, you know, unless you pay us for the stuff you've already approved, we're not going to do anything else. It's, at some point, it, it, unfortunately, it, it may have to come to that. But you, you hope it doesn't. You hope you can work it out without getting there. But you need to have that stop gap in place just in case. Um, and then, you know, are change orders bad for business? Well, change orders are inevitable. They're going to happen. They're going to happen on just about every job. But they don't have to be bad. Um, you know, there's some, there's some strategies that can, that can maximize the, the benefit of changes and just minimize the number of claims. Um, you know, build credibility. That's, that's probably the most important thing. So it's critical to maintaining a good working relationship with all parties. So you got to build credibility with the client and with, you know, with, with the other, um, whether it's contractors or subcontractors or whoever, but establish some credibility and build a good working relationship. Um, get ahead, be proactive. Um, I, I don't think we can uh, emphasize, emphasize that enough. And then, um, you know, document. You've got to document everything, and you've got to have a plan to document. You've got to have, you know, in this document management plan, you, you got to where are you going to store it? How how is you know how how are you going to access it later? And all this things. So you've got to track everything. And then if if you've got an issue, you've got to you really need to work hard, and do everything you can to to mitigate the problem, get it get ahead of it, get out in front of it as soon as you can, and and, and try to cut it off because. Uh, I think the last thing we want is a is a claim. That that's not good for you. It's not good for your client. It's just um, the end of the day. Nobody wants that. So um, in terms of process, you know you need, you need to think about uh, do your you know your field managers, your project managers, superintendents, whatever you know. Do they do they know the scope? You know if they don't, they're not going to recognize the change. Documentation is critical. Um, time. Time's not on your side. 
uh, you know, the longer these things drag on, you're, the likelihood of you getting all of your money goes down exponentially. Um, and then, you know, people tend to delay things. They like to do the least and avoid conflict. So, one, you need to you need to know who these people on your team are and kind of know your team's personalities and, and know what they're going to be up against and, and put put measures in place. Um, and that's that's part of that part of that uh, customized customer management plan. So you know what project manager you're going to have on that job. You know what superintendent you're going to have on that job. You at some point, unless they're a brand new hire, you're going to know what the tendencies are. And you know, hopefully, you know something about the, about the uh, about this client. You can set up some set up some guidelines on the front end to, to manage this. Uh, you know, you've got to update budgeted costs and budgeted hours as they occur. And then, you know, understand what your style of negotiating is, and and try to learn a little bit about what your opponent's style is. Are they, you know, are they very aggressive or are they very passive and just uh, you know, the aggressive guys are just gonna tell you right up front, right out the gate, like, you know, heck no, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pay that. That's too much. You're gonna have to come off that price or, or whatever. And uh then you've got the other guys say, Oh yeah, that sounds fine and then you start on the work and then then after the fact they say, Well, I was thinking about it and and that's too high and uh you, you know, if you have some have some insight into into what their style is, that's gonna be helpful. You know, you you certainly need to use whatever information you can get to your advantage. You know, and then, you know, pricing, pricing strategy, um, you know, establish a precedent on the first change order. So don't, don't let, let your client walk all over you on the very first one because they're going to try to do it through the rest of the project. I mean, don't, you know, you don't have to be a jerk either, but, you know, stand your ground and establish that precedent. Um, try to make that first change order a small one, and if it's a big one, maybe break it up into a couple different pieces and so that way you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're not hitting them hard right out the gate. You're kind of easing into it a little bit. Also, depending on what kind of work you do, you might be able to have some standard pricing. If you can develop any sort of standard pricing, um, that's beneficial. You know, you can present that in, in pre-construction meetings with the client and say, "Look, you know, we're still we're still going going through all the all the plans and the documents, and we're going to have RFIs out to try to clarify some of this." But I just want to give you a heads up. You know, here's how we did it. Here's, if things have to change, here, here's what we charge for certain items. Um, they can sign off on it. They can agree to that. That's, there's no surprises if any of those things happen. You know, obviously, uh, if, if you can incorporate your change order process into, into your software system, that, that's a plus. It, it certainly helps with that document management. Um, and then, you know, last, last but not least, goes back to the slowing production. You know, if a change order is going to add work or slow production, you've got to in insist on additional days. Um, if it's a critical path item, it's holding you up. Or even if it's not a critical path item, but it, it's going to cause a time overrun for some other reason, you, you've got to insist on this additional time. Um, and, you know, obviously, if you can doc document it and prove it and, and insist on it. You know, so, so that said, um, want to turn this back over to Andy, um, see if we've had any questions from the audience, and uh, happy to answer any questions that we've got right now. Absolutely. Thank you, Joel. Great presentation. Uh, I do want to get back there. There's a, a few more uh, examples that people added on uh, their change order issues that came in a little bit later. I want to touch base okay. on those, and I do have a couple questions here. And folks, uh, while we're addressing these, uh, feel free to ask any other questions you, you want to in the question panel there. Um, we'll do our very best to get to some of these questions here. Uh, but going back here, and this actually dovetails perfectly on your very last statement here, uh, one of the other issues brought up is dollars approved in the change order, time extension denied. So people having issues with getting getting those extended days or getting a time extension on the job. That's one other issue. Um, two more here. Okay. Well, well, Andy, let, me, uh, let me address. Sure, sure. Right, let me go ahead and address that one real quick. But that, part of that can, um, you, know, you, you can talk about this change order process with the client on the front end. That goes back, a lot of that goes back to pre-construction. Try one, if you can identify it, you know, when you're doing your submittals and, and your RFIs and all that on the front end, getting all that done early, that, that's certainly going to help. But, um, you know, there's a, a few slides back, um, and you guys will all get, get a copy of this, I'm assuming. Um, but, uh, 
the one that showed the the client t- the timeline for change orders. You can explain to them, you know, here's here's what it takes. Here's here's how long it takes to order. It. Here's here's what happens. And this isn't on us. It's on you. And and you really at at some point it, it might not be as easy as just explaining explaining it to them. I get that, but at some point you you kind of got to stand your ground and and say, look, you know, here's what it is, and here's you know here's what it takes to do this, and I need the extra time. This is something that was you know. Is generated on your end, and it's it's holding us up. We'll we'll try to do better if we can, but I can't make any promises. Yeah. Uh, kind of also along with this, owner delays processing change orders and schedule impact. We just kind of touch base on that. Here's another one. Um, oops, I just lost my spot there. Let me go back there. Uh, workers in the middle of the issue and update the client. However, they do not point out it will be a change to the contract. And take the client's understanding of the issue as approval to move forward. That was another issue brought up. Any thoughts mm-hmm. on that one? Yeah. So with that, that goes back to training your people. So you, you, and it's part of your process. You've got to have a process. So we see this. We realize it's a change, and I, I guess it's training on, on a couple, couple ends. One is training training people on your process, but it's also making sure that your team knows the scope. You combine those two. And you can you, you understand that you have to bill the client or that the client needs to know that it's a change order and you're not going to do this stuff unless unless you get it signed or or whatever the steps of your process are. But that, that's that's how that ties back to back to process and training. Okay, uh, Joel, this is a little bit more of a philosophical question here, but you pointed out change orders as a profit leak, uh, but some there there's some contractors that we know that consider change orders to be a revenue generator. What's the mm-hmm. difference in thinking principles, and then how can you how can change orders be a good thing for business? Uh, you broke up on me a little bit. Can you repeat the the last part of that? So I got the part about um, you know there's a lot of contractors that, that that's part of their strategy. They bid low and then and change order the way to profit. So what was the what was the second part of the statement? Yes. What's the difference in thinking between these two philosophies, and how can change orders be a good thing for business? Um, well. The, the difference difference in thinking is, is that uh, it it I guess the philosophy here depends on your market depends on your client so you have to know what your clients value first of all so are your are your clients price focused and that's all they're going to focus on and you know you can you can sell them on your value all day long and they know you're the you're the best contractor in town they know you're going to do the best job and they know your price is fair but you know what that that guy down the street. He gave us such a good price that we we know he's going to change orders, and but there, there's enough of a spread there that uh, we're, we're just going to roll the dice and, and 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 take a chance. So that's that that's part of the philosophy, and that that happens quite a lot. And honestly, I mean, I talk to more and more clients every day who say, you know, we we go back, you know, the fact that we do the best job um, do, doesn't mean as much anymore. Everybody's focused. The owners are all focused on price. It's either, you know, how how much can they beat our fee down, and are they, you know, they're trying to squeeze this every way they can. So, um, so so that you, you got to know your client, you got to know what they value. You've also, got people who, if schedule is really important for them, maybe you maybe you focus in and say, look, we're a little bit, we, we might be a little bit more than the next guy, but we're gonna we're gonna get this schedule, we're gonna get this job done ten times faster than them, or you know, what, what, whatever it may be. Oh, but then how can how can change orders be good for business? Well, they, they can be good in, in a number of ways. One, can you can you value engineer something through change orders? You know, are you able to are you able to actually save the client money in the long run? You know, so right now you know you're going to pay us 15 grand extra, but this 15 you're paying me is going to save you 20 or 25. Uh, you know, that that's one example of that. Okay. Uh, any advice on how to set caps? Uh, how do you set, how do you address caps when the unexpected uh, change order issues are needed, uh, especially if they're on critical issues? Um, so the first thing first thing you need to understand is uh, you know your own cash flow. You know, so at, at how much money are we willing to put out there that if we don't get paid, it's not going to really impact you know negatively impact our business. So that's the first thing you have, need, need to define an amount of money that you're you're comfortable sitting on for, you know, say, say your payment terms are 60 days. 
you, you know, you're, you're comfortable sitting on this for 120 because you know there's a possibility it's going to drag out if it does that. So you kind of, kind of, that's one way of setting your cap. And the other thing is, is you know, you, you got a, you got a client that's got a bad reputation, but you needed the work, you took the job anyway. Uh, maybe, maybe you get a little bit more aggressive with your cap and set them with a little lower cap. And in turn, you've also got clients that are that are good clients. You know they're eventually going to pay, but maybe they maybe they've got a couple of issues. Maybe you can consider giving them a little bit more latitude. So it's about building relationships as much as saving the caps as yep. well. Correct. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't seem to have any other questions, uh, folks. Uh, we'll leave this open for another couple minutes here. Uh, if you do have a last minute question, type it in now. But uh, I do want to take this opportunity and thank everybody for taking the time out of their schedules to join us for this webinar today. And Joel, thank you great, uh, thank you greatly for a wonderful presentation on uh, change order management. And uh, you're, again, oh, good. I'm sorry. No, so you're, you're welcome. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. And uh, like I said, we'll go, folks. We'll go ahead and leave this open for about maybe another 60 seconds or so. But uh, it looks like we're going to be at the end of our webinar here. I don't see any other questions coming in. So uh, we'll go ahead and thank everybody one last time for joining today. And uh, enjoy the rest of your days.